Luke chapter number 9, we'll begin reading verse number 37. The Bible says, And it came to pass that on the next day, when they were come down from the hill, much people met him. Behold, a man of company of the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is mine only child. And lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly crieth out, and it teareth him that he foameth again, and bruising him hardly departeth from him. And I besought thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. And Jesus answering said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. And as he was yet coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. Let's pray. Our Father, we bless you. You are worthy of our alabaster boxes. And all that we are and all that we have, we owe to thee because of their, thy great compassion and thy great grace that you bestowed upon us. Now, Father, as we come to you this morning, we are seeking your face, seeking your presence, seeking your help, for without thee we can do nothing. And Father, in a congregation of this size, you know the need of every heart. And Father, I pray you'd speak to hearts now. I pray the sweet Holy Ghost would not be grieved or quenched, but allowed to do his office work. And I pray that, Lord, he would touch hearts and change lives I pray for the saints of God that they'd truly be revived and refreshed in the things of God. And I pray for any amongst us today that may not know Thee in the free pardon of sins. I pray that today would be the day they would see their lost condition and they would see the greatness of Jesus and they put their faith and trust in Him. Now, Father, have Your will and way amongst us. Speak to hearts. Use this unworthy vessel. Father, we'll not fail to praise You and bless You for it. For it's in the holy name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Amen. As a way of introduction, I'm going to show you several things from these verses. I want you to notice, first of all, the hill. We find in verse number 37, it says, And it came to pass that on the next day, when they were come down from the hill, much people met him. And we know in reading uh, 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 prior to this that uh, uh, Jesus took his inner circle, Peter, James, and John, with him up into the mount, uh, and there he was transfigured before them. Uh, you have to understand that Jesus didn't begin some 2,000 years ago, uh, that he took on flesh and he was born of a virgin in this world, uh, but we know that Jesus has always been. Uh, and Jesus came and robed of flesh uh, that he might become our kinsman redeemer, uh, not to just come to a stable, not to come to the manger, uh, but he came to go to the cross, uh, and he came to bleed and die to become our lamb, our sacrifice, uh, to pay our sin debt. Uh, but he had lived, Brother Jack, for some 30 years, uh, and he'd lived in this flesh. Uh, he goes up to the mountain, uh, and no longer could the flesh contain him. Uh, he just shone forth who he really was. Uh, he showed them his glory. Uh, we find on the mountain that Moses and Elijah came uh, and presented themselves. Uh, Moses was a picture of the law. Elijah, a picture of the prophet. Uh, both of them were met by Jesus Christ uh, and Jesus Christ uh, came full of grace and truth. Uh, he fulfilled the law and made a way uh, for sinners to be saved. Uh, what a blessing that they saw all those things on the hill. Uh, they saw the glory of God uh, on the hill. Uh, I've got good news. Uh, Jesus went to the hill of Mount Calvary. Uh, and even though I've never literally been there, uh, I've seen it by faith. Uh, and I've been to the hill. Uh, and when he got to the hill, uh, he showed who he really was, the Lamb of God. Uh, and I met the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and he changed my life because of the hill. Uh, we see the hill. I want you to notice the harassed. Look with me, please. In verse 38, <coughs> excuse me, the Bible says, And behold, a man of the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is my only child. And lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly crieth out, and it teareth him, and then he foameth again, and bruising him hardly departeth from him. Here's a young man that is harassed by the devil. 
This man has a son who has been possessed by a demon. Now, I know we live in a day and age where we don't really think this stuff exists anymore. It was just good for Bible printing. Uh, all you got to do is turn on the TV. Look at all the shows geared toward demonology to synthesize people to the fact that demons really exist. We've got the walking dead. We've got the zombies. We've got the vampires. All those things are to uh, uh, make us uh, 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 come to a point in our lives where we accept demon activity in this world. But this young man is being destroyed by a demon. Can I help you with something? There's a lot of people being destroyed by demons all around us. Hmm? We see this young man is being harassed by the demon. Can I say there are people who are not possessed by a demon, but they're harassed by the devil? If you're saved, I guarantee you, you've been harassed by the devil. But this young man is actually possessed by a demon. Now notice the helpless. Look in verse number 40. He said, I besought thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. And Jesus answering and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Can I say Jesus' disciples had a little problem? They got real comfortable hanging around Jesus, watching Jesus do a lot of things, but they didn't pick up much. And when people besought them to, to get help, they couldn't help. Can I say there are a lot of people that's been to the hill. A lot of people have been saved. A lot of people know the Lord, but they've just hang, hung out with the Lord. And now that uh, the Lord's went to glory, uh, 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 they just uh, 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 can't help people to get out of their situations. There's a lot of powerless disciples sitting around churches. They're expecting Jesus to do some work on some folks, but they can't help them. Can I say Jesus left us His peace. He left us His promises. And He left us His presence in the Holy Ghost. And He told us to take the gospel to every creature. And He told us to be able to help people and minister unto people. But too many people are so busy being self-centered. They can't help. They're powerless. They're helpless. Can I say these folks were helpless because of their lack of faith. Their lack of fervent prayer. Jesus told them in another place that this kind goeth out not but by prayer and fasting. And because their lack of a foundation. You know why we can't help a lot of people that are being harassed by the devil? Our lack of faith, our lack of fervent prayer, and our lack of a foundation. You know why you're not comfortable witnessing to people? Because you yourself know you don't know enough of the scriptures to help them. You sit in church every Sunday, but if I quizzed you on to tell you and to ask you to take the Bible and show me how to get to heaven, most of you couldn't do it. Exactly. Lord, help us. One day you're going to stand before Jesus and give an account of all the preaching and teaching you've heard, and he's going to look at you just like he looked at this crowd and says, How long am I going to be with you? He says, You're useless. Hmm? I don't want to be useless. I want to be used. Amen. We see the hill, we see the harass, we see the helpless, but notice the healing. Look in verse 41. Thank God Jesus was there. Yes. Verse 41, And Jesus answering and said, O faithless, perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. And as he was yet coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. I'm glad Jesus is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. I'm glad Jesus can take nothing and do everything. And Jesus can even take helpless people and use them to change people's lives. But I'm interested in verse 42 where it says, And he healed the child and delivered him again to his father. I got to thinking about Jesus. Can I say this about Jesus? Jesus delivers. You can always count on him. Amen. He's better than FedEx. He's better than UPS. Better than the U.S. Post Office. Jesus delivers, huh? Yeah. Sure. He delivered this child again to his father. Yeah. Hmm? And I got to thinking about him delivering. And I want to preach for a little while this morning on Jesus delivers. Yeah. Can I say, first of all, Jesus delivers from demons. Amen. 
we find that this young man was demon possessed uh, and uh, this demon took this child as far as he could go uh, but somebody got him to Jesus uh, and Jesus delivered uh, this young man of the devil uh, can I help you with something uh, all around us people have been uh, uh, hoodwinked by the devil some of them have been blinded by the devil uh, some of them are possessed by the devil uh, what we need to do is get them to Jesus uh, Jesus can deliver them from demons thank the Lord for that you say, I, 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 there's somebody's a lost cause. Just give them to Jesus. He delivers. He delivers from demons. Can I say this? He delivers from defilement. He delivers from sin. I don't care if it's a white lie or if it's murder. Jesus can deliver you from sin. Uh, say, preacher, why do you go over there to, to, to the jails? Why do we go over there every weekend uh, uh, to tell them Jesus uh, is the answer for their problems? Uh, Jesus can forgive them of their sin. Uh, I've got news for you. Uh, they not only need to hear it, the church house needs to hear it. Uh, other people down the street need to hear it. Uh, Jesus came seeking to save sinners, uh, and he can deliver you from your sin. <coughs> there's a lot of Christian people caught up in sin Amen. Jesus can deliver you from sin Amen. there's not anything that can bind you that he can't break the chains Amen. Amen. Mm. he delivers from sin say preacher I got a sin problem I got good news Jesus delivers from sin mm. can I say this he delivers from defeat I've never seen a time where people are so defeated Boy, you got it rough. You live in America. Yeah. Mm. You live in the land of opportunity. Yes, You've got a nice house. You got nice clothes. You got a nice car. You got a nice job. You got places to go. You got a little change in your pocket. Uh, anytime you got, you're hungry, you got food to eat. Uh, I mean, you got it tough. Uh, but we walk around on our lower lip like we're nobody. Uh, 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 we saw the video this morning, Sunday school. There are folks that do not have anything. Uh, we are blessed. Uh, and if you're saved by the good grace of God, uh, you have no reason to uh, be defeated. Uh, thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, I got news for your defeat. The answer is Jesus. Mm. If you quit looking at your circumstances, quit looking at your valley, quit looking at your problems, start looking at Jesus, you'll find you have nothing to complain about. Mm. Can I say this? Jesus can deliver you from disease. We got several sitting in here that, that this past year was told they had cancer. They don't have cancer today. Why is that? Because Jesus delivers. He's the great physician. Mm. From a cold to cancer, he can hold you, help you, heal you. But I guarantee you one thing, he's the answer. He's given doctors wisdom, but can I say healing comes from the Lord. Can I say this? Jesus delivers from depression. I've never seen so many people in the, mood, uh, in the mully grubs and got, you know, just uh, the blue moons all the time. Hmm? Jesus can deliver you from that stuff, folks. It's a state of mind. The Bible lets us know that if we think on the things of the Lord, perfect peace have they whose mind is stayed upon the Lord. Can I say the Apostle Paul, who was in prison, I'm talking about a fellow who was a ruler of the Jews. He's now in prison by the Jews. He's been beaten. He's been stoned. He's been left by his family. He's been left by everybody. Uh, I mean, every man forsook him. I mean, if anybody had a right to be depressed, it should have been Paul. They brought him before the king. He said, I think myself happy. David comes back from battle with his, uh, uh, his mighty men. He comes back to Ziklag, uh, and uh, the city has been burned, and all their wives and children and all their possessions have been taken. Uh, and the very army that followed David uh, were so grieved, they was ready to stone David. And the Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord. Right. Praise the Lord. Mm. You know why you're depressed? Because you choose to be depressed. Yeah. If you're saved, you've got help for your depression. His name is Jesus. You got a thinking problem. Paul said, if there be anything of virtue, be anything of praise, be anything of good report, be anything lovely, he said, think on these things. You've got a thinking problem. Hmm? You've got to learn to bring your thoughts under submission. And a good way to do that is saturate your mind with the Word of God. And you can find some help with your depression. Hmm? Too many people walk around all in the blues, singing the blues, walking in the blues. Uh, your favorite song is Blue Christmas. Mm. shame on you as Gomer Powell used to say shame, shame, shame 
You know better than that. If you're saved, God's been good to you. You need to think about the goodness of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God. I mean, He's blessed you beyond your, your deserving. He's allowed you to be a part of good church, gave you the Bible, gave you all kinds of friends, uh, and you're sitting there all depressed. Shame on you. Hmm? There are folks in this world that are truly lonely. There are folks in this world that have nothing. There are folks in this world, even the worst thing, they have no Jesus. You are blessed. He delivers from depression. I got good news. He delivers from dope. Uh, dope is not always something you shoot in your arm. Dope, dope can come in a pill form. It can come in a bottle form. It can come in a tobacco form. It can come in an internet form. There's a lot of things people are addicted to. I got good news. Jesus can deliver you from that. Mm -mm. Hey, he's greater than all that stuff. He's a delivering Lord. Mm? He didn't come to just save your soul. He came to deliver you. Mm? Can I say this? Jesus can deliver from discouragement. Oh, it's easy to get discouraged. But all you got to do is look a little bit higher. You'll find one that can deliver you from your discouragement. Can I say this? He can deliver you from your doubt. They brought them men to Jesus. He said, he said, do you believe? He said, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Yes. Amen. He can deliver you from your unbelief, your doubt, and your fear. Yep. Mm -hmm. There's never been a time I was faced with anything that should have brought fear to my soul that I didn't look to Jesus and I found peace. Amen. He can deliver you from your doubt. Can I say this? He can deliver you from your defects. Throughout the Bible, throughout his earthly ministry, he, he healed people of withered hands. He healed the halt, the maim, the blind, the lame. People that the world saw as defective. You know what causes us to feel defective most of the time? It's our mind and how we think about ourselves. But if you truly get locked into Jesus, and you see, Jesus, you see yourself as Jesus sees you, you'll find deliverance from your, from your, your defects. You find Jesus loves you just the way you are. Jesus made you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And Jesus can help you. He can heal your mind and deliver you from your defects. Hmm? Amen. Can I say this? Hallelujah, Jesus delivers from death. Chapter 7, verse 13, the Bible says, And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. He's in the delivering business. That widow of Nain lost all she had when her son died. And Jesus had compassion on her, raised her son, delivered him unto, her, uh, unto his mother. Hmm? You say, I've, I've buried loved ones. Jesus didn't deliver them. Oh, were they saved? Jesus delivers from death. I've got good news. I'm never going to die. This old body may be laid down one of these days, but that, that I, my soul's going to live forever. I have everlasting life because He delivered me from death when He delivered me from sin. Hmm? There are a lot of people who believe that when you die, you go to some way station, then you're prayed into heaven. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The Bible also said the wicked man, the rich man, when he died in hell, he lift up his eyes. There is no middle station. It's what you do with Jesus in this life determines where you're going to spend eternity. But those that are born again, Jesus delivered them from death. The Bible says, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? What happened? I got delivered. Because I got born again, because I've been born twice, I'll never die. Hmm? Thank the Lord for that. You say, Preacher, Jesus can deliver you from all that. How? I'm glad you asked. First of all, if you're going to be delivered, you've got to accept His deliverance. Yes, sir. You're never going to be delivered contemplating about being delivered. You're never going to be delivered just knowing that He can deliver you. Amen. In order to be delivered, you've got to accept His deliverance. Yes, and the only way you can accept His deliverance is to accept Him. We just had Christmas. Kids, you have a good Christmas? Everybody have a good Christmas? Phil, did you have a good Christmas down in Mickey Mouse World? Yes, sir. Good. Uh, Trev, did you have a good Christmas? 
you get lots of presents? That's cool, isn't it? Did you have to open them presents? They didn't open themselves, did they? They didn't just stay under the tree and you got the benefit of them. You had to open them. Well, the same way of Jesus' deliverance. You can know all about it. You can hear all about it. You can see it in everybody else's life. But until you receive it yourself, you'll never know his deliverance. Just like those Christmas gifts, they didn't unwrap themselves. They had to be received. Somebody purchased them. Somebody delivered them. But you had to open it and accept it yourself. Can I say Jesus purchased your deliverance? He purchased your salvation in his own blood. He purchased your healing. He purchased with his stripes we are healed. Uh, he is taking care of all the delivering problems you have. Amen. But you've got to receive him. You've got to accept his deliverance. So, say, well, how do I do that, preacher? You've got to believe on the Lord. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved. You've got to believe and repent. You've got to believe that he can deliver you. And then turn from your life to Him. Say, Lord Jesus, I don't have much, but here's my life. Will you deliver me? That's all it takes. Amen. Believe that He can, and believe that He will. And just turn your life to Him. Accept His deliverance. You can be delivered. Can I say this? You've got to aspire to His deliverance. If you're here today and you're saved and you're struggling with things, you've got to seek the Lord. Amen. Psalmist said, I'll look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Amen. You've got to seek His deliverance. The Lord's not just going to come to where you are and magically appear and take away all your problems. You've got to come to the Lord. The Bible says, draw nigh to God, He'll draw nigh to you. Yeah. You've got to aspire to His deliverance. You've got to realize you need to be delivered and come to Him. Hmm? Do you ever wonder why there's such a struggle during the invitation for people to get out of the pews? You know why? We don't like to admit we need help. We're comfortable in the pew because that's where everybody else stays. But in order to get deliverance, you've got to realize you've got to come to Jesus. You've got to swallow your pride and come to Him. And see, we don't like that part. We want Jesus to do it all. Well, He's done it all. And He says, now it's your turn. I'm reminded what He told the people in Jeremiah's day, over there in Jeremiah 21, 8. And unto this people thou shalt say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I have set before you the way of life and the way of death. The choice was theirs. You can be delivered or you can live in the bondage that you're in. The choice is yours. But you have to come to Jesus if you're going to be delivered. Amen. You've got to accept His deliverance. He's the only one who can deliver you. And you've got to aspire to His deliverance. You've got to leave your life in your pew, in your situation, your circumstance to come to Him. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you more than I need this problem. And then lastly... You've got to abide in His deliverance. So many Christians stay weak because you'll come to the altar, you'll lay something down at His feet, and then you'll pick it up and take it back home with you. You've got to abide in His deliverance. Hmm. Hey, He's delivered others. Why won't He deliver you? He's no respecter of persons. He will when you're willing to abide in it. The Bible says, cast all your cares upon the Lord, for He cares for you. That word cast means to let it go. Just... Amen. Elsa or Anna, whichever one sang it, had it down. Let it go. Hmm? Just let it go. It's funny. My daughter babysit a little boy over the summer, and he's just got old enough where he can comprehend, and there's... He saw Frozen for the first time, and he swears that Sydney's Elsa. <laughs> Calls her Elsa now. Hmm? But you've got to cast it. You've got to get rid of it. The reason some of you are bound by things is because you won't let them go. It's not that the Lord can't deliver you. 
you won't let them go. You keep picking it up. You got to let it go. And by the grace of God, trust God to deliver you. Hmm? He's not going to deliver you if you keep picking it up. But if you give it to Him and say, Lord, I'm going to trust you with it and walk in that every day, you'll find each and every day He starts delivering you more and more and more. And one day you're going to look back and say, I can't believe I ever had a problem with that. God's grace is sufficient. I've seen folks that struggle with things for years give it to Jesus and instantly he take it. He was just waiting for them to trust him. I've seen some of the darkest sinners come to Christ because they got tired of living in that sin and he delivered them. I've seen church members get saved because they got tired of living a lie and they just came to him and he delivered them from their pride and their hypocrisy. Friend, he'll deliver you today. He's a delivering God. Amen. He gave me this message to let you know he wants to deliver you. Amen. He's done all the work. The question remains, will you be delivered? Will you let him deliver you? There's Christians in here that struggle with things for years and God gave them a verse and they've been over overcome because God delivers. He'll deliver you, friend. There's folks here that sat where you want, where the once sat where you're sitting, lost, confused, wondering if it was real. Finally, they just accepted him, and they could tell you today he's real, Amen. and he'll deliver you. Friend, don't leave here the same way you came in. Get some help today. Jesus wants to deliver you. All of us have things we need help with. Jesus is the answer. In a minute, we're going to have an invitation. We're going to just invite you to come get delivered from whatever it is. You say, Preacher, I'd like to be saved, but I don't know how. You come. We'll get somebody to take a Bible, show you how to be saved. You can be delivered from your sin. If you're here today and you're saved, you can be delivered from whatever binds you and keeps you from having victory. But you've got to be willing to admit you need deliverance and then give it to Jesus. He can deliver you, friend. That man brought his son to Jesus and Jesus delivered his son back to him. Amen. Some of you just need to come give it to Jesus and watch him do great work in your life. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, get a song of invitation. While he gets a song, folks are praying. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. I'm glad you're in the delivering business. I'm glad you're able to overcome anything. There's nothing too hard for thee. Lord, as we are praying right now, the devil is hard at work trying to bind people just like he tried to harass that young man. But Lord, you delivered that young man. I pray you deliver people right now. Help folks to realize they need help and help them to come to the one who can help them, Jesus. Lord, if there's someone here today unsaved, I pray that you just speak to their heart. Let them know they don't have to live that way. That God, you'll save them from their sin if they'll come to you. Lord, for somebody here today, saved, but Lord, struggling with whatever it is, God, help them realize they can live in victory. They'll come and give it to you. God, speak to hearts now. Help, folks. Save that one nearest hell. God, will thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.